Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test those whom He loves. And He will see if this kalima that they claim, the shahada that they honor, the title that they took is true. لذلك يقول الله أحسب الناس أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم فلا يعلمن الله الذين صدقوا ولا يعلمن الكاذبين الله سبحانه وتعالى stated in the Quran do the people think that they will be left alone by declaring La ilaha illallah. That he will be left alone by saying, I am a Muslim. Wahum la yuftanun. Without them being tested. And Allah then stated another statement to give you a comfort and to let you know you're not the first. And he said, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ And indeed we have tried and tested the people before them. Allah will not let you go until he filters a munafiq from a mu'min, a sadiq from a kathib, a liar from the truthful. Allah will not let you go to paradise unless he tests you again and again and again. A mu'min will not be a wali of Allah until he's tested or she's tested. And there would be people, ikhwati billah, there would be people who will test you in your daily life. Who will test you in your faith, with your family, with your honor. لذلك يقول الله وجعلنا بعضكم لبعض فتنة أتصبرون وكان ربك بصيرا. Allah subhanahu wa taala said, and we made you trial of one another. أتصبرون ولا you gonna be patient or not? وكان ربك بصيرا. And your Lord is ever awesome. When Allah sent this individual to test you, He knows the result of your test. He knows you're innocent from that claim. He knows this person is accusing you, but He's testing you so He can elevate your status. When people talk about you, you must know you're going upstairs to the wilaya of Allah, to become the friends of Allah, one of the friends of Allah, to become one that Allah loves. So do not complain about the test, but welcome it. When a believer gets hardship, he doesn't go crazy. Uh, he doesn't become depressed. Uh, he doesn't he, he doesn't get a nervous breakdown. Why? Because he remembers Allah, he thanks Allah and he turns to Allah and his heart is happy with Allah. Uh, so Allah gives him satisfaction. He doesn't a true Muslim can never ever be depressed. If a person is depressed and he has a nervous breakdown, that means there is something seriously wrong with his iman. Otherwise, a true believer he can never have a nervous breakdown. He's always satisfied with Allah. And it says in another hadith, مَنْ لَمْ يَرْضَ بِقَضَائِ وَلَمْ يَصْبِرْ عَلَىٰ بَلَائِ فَلْيَلْتَمِسْ رَبًّا سِوَائِ If a person is not happy with what Allah wants to give him, and مَنْ لَمْ يَرْضَ بِقَضَائِ وَلَمْ يَصْبِرْ عَلَىٰ بَلَائِ And when Allah inflicts any hardship and he doesn't make sabr, then Allah says, this is Qudsi, فَلْيَالْتَ مِسْ رَبَّنْ سِوَائِ He should go and get himself another Rabb other than me. And is there another Rabb other than Allah? No. And a person who's happy with Allah, who's happy with Allah with the little Allah gives him, if Allah has given someone little, not abundant, he has a nice simple car, nice simple hut or a house which is, which is sufficient for him. He doesn't get a three course meal every day, but he does get enough to fill his stomach, alhamdulillah. And he's happy with Allah. If a person is happy with the little Allah gives him, Allah will become happy with the little he gives Allah. Pain and suffering only becomes negative if it creates a barrier between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it becomes positive. Pain becomes positive, a motivation for you when it brings you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what every individual who's going through pain and suffering needs to realize. That this point of pain and suffering is not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to punish you, but rather this is a calling from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh my slave, come back to your Lord. Oh my slave, this is a reminder for you that I want to bring you back to me. And this is one of the wisdoms of trials and tribulations. That while we call each other on the phone, while we text message each other, the calling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
comes through trials and tribulations. And you can react one of two ways. Either you can deal with the pain at that moment and decide to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you can decide to just restrict that pain to yourself, not do anything about it, and then you'll see what it does to your deen. And this is the last stage of the cycle of isolation. That once you're isolated, you will see that eventually your deen starts to disappear. The content of your salah, the khushu in your salah, it disappears. Your ability to recite the Qur'an is no longer there. Your ability to fast during the day, it gets taken away. What did you do differently? What you did differently was, you gave yourself into shaitan. And shaitan's promise is that he will lead you astray, he will lead you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in times of trials and tribulation, you need to seek out the believers. You need to seek out the righteous and let them be your guide and help to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is actually a blessing inside trials that we don't perceive. The simplest trial that an individual will go through is that he's walking on the road and he gets pricked by a thorn. He gets pricked by something that goes through his skin and causes him to say, ouch. But it's only for a split second. The Prophet ﷺ said that no individual is pricked by a thorn except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies him with a sin for it. Trials and tribulations are a means of purification. They are a means of purifying you so you can go to the purest of places. The punishment of Allah is not out of anger and wrath. The punishment of Allah is a means of cleansing you of your sins. The punishment of Allah is a preparation that you can go into noblest and purest of places. Al-Firdaus Al-A'la And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends trials and tribulations. So what you do brother is and sister is don't you sit there and start to wonder why Allah put you in the position you're in. There's no way you're going to work it out. But I guarantee you one thing. Allah said on the day, on, on, in the Quran Inna rabbaka yassidu baynahum yawm al -qiyamah. Allah will make it absolutely clear absolutely clear why certain things happen to you in this world. He can't tell you right now because if he tells you right now the test wouldn't be the test. See, Allah is testing us. The test wouldn't be the test. And that other hadith that I said, where Allah Azza wa is choosing the most closest to Him and the most closest to Him. Why is Allah doing that? Why? Because Allah Azza wa not only wants to give them the high darajah, not only wants to give them that high station and the high rank in front of Him, but Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal wants to also make Him an example for other people. And Allah Azza wa Jal wants to make them people who show, who, sh who actually produce and they show that they've, that they've got a reason to go to Jannah. My friend, tell me, we're going to go to Jannah, Allah needs to show on the Day of Judgment, this servant of mine earned Jannah for this reason. The Prophet wasallam said, A moment's affair is strange. And when Allah blesses him with something good, and he thanks Allah, he enjoys the goodness Allah has given him, and then he says, Ya Allah, I thank you for what you've given me. Allah rewards him. Allah has blessed him and he's enjoying himself. And by thanking Allah, he's getting more reward from Allah. And then when Allah gives, Allah takes something away and replaces it with hardship, he makes a sabr. And so as well as getting that hardship, it's hardship temporarily, but it's getting reward from Allah. And so much reward. The reward Allah will give the people who make sabr will have no limits and no bounds. Uh, so much reward. And the hardship, illness, TB, cancer, whatever, a person will suffer a few years at the most then even if a person was living a life, severe hardship, severe illness, until death took him away. But when death comes, illness is also taken away. And there is nobody with cancer in the grave. There will be nobody with cancer in Jannah. These hardships are indeed good, but we see them as evil. Allah sends a hardship to inspect you. Where is your Iman? Get it up. Death can come at any moment. Keeps you in check with it. He sends you 
a hardship to protect you from your own sins. Allah Azza wa sends you a hardship to direct you. You haven't made dua in a long time. Rush back to Allah. Sometimes we only come the hard way. We have to get stuck between a rock and a hard place to remember Allah Azza wa unfortunately. And he, he opens the way for that. He sends us hardships to perfect us. Tons of benefits in these hardships. Also, as they say, the hardship comes and it's good for you because it's pain. But pain is weakness leaving the body. They say, if it doesn't break you, it makes you stronger. And to also remember through that difficulty that you are the property of Allah. You don't own yourself. Therefore, He has all right to do with you as He pleases. Don't we know the stories of the Anbiya alayhi salam? They were the ones that were tested the most, yet they never turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A little bit of difficulty comes me and you, straight away, what have I done wrong? Huh? What have I done wrong? I've prayed my five prayers. I give charity. I do this, I do that. And why has Allah just picked on me? You got people say these stupid things. Why me? So why not you, I say? Huh? Why? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the Anbiya, why can't He test me and you? It's His right, Allahu Akbar. Those individuals who when they are struck with calamity, when they are struck with hardship and strife, they say to indeed to Allah we belong. Indeed to Allah we belong and to Him we shall return. That in every tribulation in your life, you have an option to make. You can either turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you can turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the ironic thing. People think that Islam or your deen or Allah is the cause of your hardship and strife. And thus people turn away from the deen and they listen to the whispers of shaitan. But when you do that, your life becomes even more miserable. You have no source of tranquility or serenity. Your problems get bigger. But you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you seek dhikr and you seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is when you feel calm and serene. That is when your problems seem insignificant. Because you realize that nothing happens in this world except by the will of Allah. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes good for a people, He tries them. He gives them trials and tribulations. Now how does that make sense? It makes sense because Allah wants to purify the character of a Muslim. He wants to purify the faith of the Muslim. And just like a diamond comes out of a coal after heat and pressure, thus the believer comes out of his trial and tribulation, purified and beautiful and invaluable. This is the state of the believer. So number one, Allah tests the believers to purify them and make them better people. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies the sins of the Muslim in the time of tribulation if he is patient. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said that a Muslim is not pricked by a thorn and he bleeds a little bit except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies his sins by the pricking of the thorn. And the greater the calamity, the greater the tribulation, the more your sins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. Benefit number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to bring his, clo his slaves closer to him through trials and tribulations. Allah wants you to be close to him. He wants you to increase in ibadah. He wants you to remember him more. And this is just a reminder that in that state of trial and tribulation, you feel weak, you feel helpless, and thus you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. He tests you not to punish you. He tests you not to abuse you, but He tests you because He wants to strengthen that relationship in your life that you need the most. The relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, these are just three benefits from trials and tribulations. And this is the first step in changing our perception with how we deal with the trials and tribulations. These trials and tribulations in this world are nothing. They're finite, they're limited. And an individual who realizes this, he will be able to surpass and circum everything. 
You just have to change your perception on how you view those trials and tribulations. You could lose your house, you could lose your wealth, you could lose your family. But know that it happened by the permission and will of Allah. And Allah does not take away anything from his slave except that he replaces it with something better either in this world or in the afterlife. Uh, so a moment has got nothing to lose. If you're happy, mashallah, you got good things, thank Allah. Uh, if you're going through hardship, no problem, don't despair, make sabr, and the hardships Allah will take away uh, after a while. Inna ma'al usri yusra, inna ma'al usri yusra. Allah guarantees after every hardship there is ease. After every hardship there is ease. Allah guarantees. Uh, if nothing in this world, then the ease Allah will give on the hereafter, Allah will compensate for all the hardships of this world. Then a person will wish uh, he had spent all his life in hardship. A person, he says in hadith, a person will be brought on the day of Qiyamah who would have spent his entire life in hardship. And not just hardship, but severe hardship. And Allah will say to the angels, just take him and whisk him through Jannah. And then bring him back. And then he will be brought back. And Allah, A person who lived his life in the most severe hardships will be brought. And then Allah will say to him, after having been through Jannat, and just smell the, uh, just felt the cool breeze and smell the fragrance of Jannat and just seen it, he will, Allah will say, Tell me, have, have you ever seen any hardship in your worldly life? He will say, Ya Allah, Wallahi, he will swear by the honor of Allah. Ya Allah, I have hardship, what's that? You know, I have never seen any hardship. That just one, one go, uh, just one breeze of Jannat, one just uh, a cool smell of Jannat will make him forget all the hardships of this world. And Allah will say to him, Oh my, oh my servant, I did not put you in hardship in the world uh, because I look down upon you or because you were you because you were disgraced in my gaze rather i i kept the world away from you so that i can bless you more in the akhirat in this world you will never truly be happy no matter what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you you will never truly be content you can have the most amount of money in the world you can have the biggest house you can have the most beautiful spouse you can have everything that you desire and you'll never be happy. True contentment, true contentness and satisfaction comes in the Akhirah alone. It comes when we are in paradise. All of this is about perspective and how you deal with the situation. And that is why it is very important that an individual who goes through a trial, he changes his perspective of the trial. It's not a punishment from Allah, it's a means to get closer. It is not a punishment from Allah, it's a calling from Allah that He wants you to come back to Him. Now why is patience such an important thing when it comes to trial? Because the Prophet wasallam says that an individual who is patient in times of adversity incurs the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the individual who is not patient, he incurs the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the situation is already as difficult as it is, you're going through a trial. Why make it worse by not being patient? Because you're only incurring the wrath of Allah. And an individual who's patient and remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they get the salawat of Allah, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. They get the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends off the verse by saying, وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُحْتَدُونَ That they are the ones who are truly guided. In times of trials and tribulation, you have a decision to make. Either you can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is your way to paradise. Or you can decide to live with your pain, seek the pity of people, and let the pain get worse, and create your own destruction. If the trial is by way of blessing, you cope that with shukr, with gratefulness. And if the trial, the test is by way of sharr, by way of evil, evil meaning in the way you perceive it, the way it's manifested in your eyes, then the believer then is obligated to equip himself with patience. 
and he is to know at that moment when he's going through that difficulty, that test of evil, of harm, adversity, that his job here is to safeguard being close to Allah. Because Allah promises that He will not let His awliya go to ruins. He will protect those close to Him. And He will defend them. And He will grant them shade in His shade. And in His care. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of that, the person is to remember through that difficulty, through that test, he is to remember and never forget. That even during the test, Allah is more merciful with him than his own mother is with him. And these are not my words. In Sahih al-Bukhari, in Hayth al-Umr ibn Khattab, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a woman from one of the prisoners of war panicking, looking for her lost child that she thought was gone forever. So when she finally grabbed him and pulled him to her chest and one narration nursed him, he sought this opportunity to teach the Sahaba a lesson, radwanullahi alayhim. So he said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Atarawna hadihi al mar'a tarihatan waladaha fin nar. Do you think this mother, this woman, would ever throw her baby child in the fire? Qalu la ya Rasulallah, wa hiya taqadiru ala thalik. They said, No, O Messenger of Allah, she would never do something like that if it was in her hand. If she had any say in the matter, she'd never let it happen. So he said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wallahi, by Allah. لَاللَّهُ أَرْحَمُ بِعِبَادِهِ مِنَ الْوَالِدَةِ بِوَلَدِهَا By Allah, Allah is more merciful with his slaves than the mother is with her child. And to remember that during that difficulty, Allah sends it to either raise your levels or cleanse you of your sins. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek assistance through sabr, through bearing patience, through restraining yourselves, and through prayer. Subhanallah. Seek assistance to achieve whatever you want, to pass the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek assistance to do that by bearing sabr and by engaging in salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Indeed, it is very difficult to do this except for those who are pious, those who are humble, those who will adopt the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wholeheartedly. For them, it will be simple to engage in sabr. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ O you who believe, seek assistance. You need help? Seek help through bearing patience, bearing sabr and through salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is definitely with those who bear patience. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of Surah Al Imran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اصْبِرُوا وَصَابِرُوا وَرَابِطُوا وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ O you who believe, bear patience and endure and protect the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order that you may succeed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us success. Know that tragedy is always near us. Know that difficulty and hardship is never distant. And Allah makes it very clear to us that the tests that are provided to us are to show our resilience and patience in Him and endurance in His way. How do you recover as a believer? How do you find that compass that leads you back to the center to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let us begin this journey, my dear brothers and sisters, of recovering from our difficulties by first accepting the one true fact that you as a human being, as strong as you are, and as mighty as you may think you may be, you are in fact a weak creation of the Almighty Allah. 
You have to come to this conclusion initially to know that everything in your life isn't only and entirely in your hand. There is more to life than what you can influence. There is a divine presence, there is a divine decree and order that is beyond your capability and power. Do not ever assume that you solely are in control. It is Allah who bestows to people and it is Allah who recants and takes it from them. It is Allah who elevates, it is Allah who humiliates. It is Allah who gives health, it is Allah who gives sickness. It is Allah who gives wealth, it is Allah who gives poverty. Always return to Allah, Allah is in control. Oh Allah help me. How can you ask if you do not believe that it is He who has given? And it is he who has taken. Second, my dear brother and sister in Islam, recovering from difficulty is hastened in appreciation and assistance of others. And the Prophet teaches us, he says, Allah is his helper. As long as you are aiding and in the assistance of a fellow man, Allah becomes your aid and your assistant. And therefore the one who helps others garners and is aided and is supported by the one who needs no help, his creator, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third in recovering from error is seeking forgiveness. See, sometimes we bring about disasters in our life by the acts that we perform. Istighfar, my dear brother and sister in Islam, is one of the keys of your way to saying, Oh Allah, help me. The Prophet taught us that as soon as we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, in our prayer, as soon as we conclude, the first utterances that you make is, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness and protection. And you repeat it three times. From what? What forgiveness are you seeking? You just prayed. You weren't stealing, you weren't out committing any crimes or, or anything of a, of a devilish, evil nature. You were praying. Why are you seeking forgiveness? It is to always remind you that there are always indiscretions in our life. That had we not sought refuge with Allah, that they would have remained unforgiven, unanswered for us. It is necessary for upon us to seek His forgiveness and to ask Him for His aid and with sincerity. To be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your difficulty and in your stress and to not despair in the mercy of Allah and to know that good things and bad things happen to good people and bad people. To know everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To take heed from what happens around us with other people, with other friends of ours is a significant fact in our relationship with Allah and in aiding us to recover from our difficulty. Be patient. Don't despair in the mercy of Allah. Take the, what Allah has given you and be patient in it. Also from the great lessons we learn from the Prophet ﷺ is thankfulness. Not just patience, but thankfulness for the adversity. To be thankful even in time of difficulty is a really, it's not an easy task unless one possesses that true faith where they have reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah tells us in the Quran, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are thankful to me, I will increase you. I will give you more than what you already have. Look at your life, my dear brother and sister, and assess yourself as a believer in Allah. Are you truly thankful for what you have? Are you thankful for the blessings that you have been extended? Nothing in your life will have a greater impact on what you experience in your day-to-day -day existence greater than your worship of Allah. The things you say, you know, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, matter. They actually truly matter. They make an impact on your life. Your recitation of the Qur'an literally impacts your physical, tangible existence. It increases your barakah, it increases your health, it increases your lifespan. Those things matter in your life. So worship Allah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta safiru wa atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum.